Well, Glenn. Yes. Thank it's, you for inviting me this it's time. It's good to see. Yeah. Well, you've been so curious about measuring and about precision instruments. And you should see me at home now. I'm like crazy with measurements. <laughs> well, today what I really wanted you to, to inform you about is, is gauge blocks. And by the way, folks, we've already done a couple of videos on, on uh, gauge blocks and how to use them, proper use of them, and so forth. So refer to those videos, if you will, please. But I'd like to just go over briefly uh, a little bit about the history and more importantly about how to stack gauge blocks and what they do and what they're about. Okay. So to begin with, there's a lot of different types of gauge blocks. Wow. This one happens to be rectangular. We also have square sets, but uh, even in the rectangular ones, you can buy, for example, you can buy uh, steel, which is steel all the way around, or carbide blocks where they're solid carbide, or you can buy chrome plated, so they chrome the edges, the, outside, the, the surfaces rather. Right. And you might say, why do they chrome that? Do you know why? I was going to ask, why? Because it will wear longer. Because steel is soft. And oh. it, it is hardened steel. I don't right. mean to say it's not right. hardened. But by but. comparison to carbide, steel is soft. Okay. And chrome is in the middle. So it would go steel, chrome, carbide if you want longevity. Okay. So why would you not just buy carbide all the time? Because they're expensive. Okay. <laughs> These are a whole lot cheaper. And the same thing with a the chrome. They're a little bit more, but not right. anywhere near. There's also one more. You know what it is? Blackened? Ceramic. Oh, Glass. ceramic. Wow. That's expensive too. I bet. And I think the wear qualities, I'm not sure, but they're probably a little better than carbide, but okay. in that area. So. Because there's different kinds of gauge blocks, they have different functions in many people's eyes. Sure. There's a square set. Why a square set? Well, one of the nice features about it is it has a hole in the middle. In fact, we have one over here. This one happens to be six inches. When you get in height, it's a lot more stable for one. So when you're putting it on a surface plate, you get up 10, 12, 14 inches, the square set is better than this from a stability standpoint. It's not gonna fall over. And the hole like is a, for what? Good question. The hole is if you wanna bolt them together, you can. Oh, okay. So you can put a stack of them together and you can put a rod through them and bolt them together. Now, again, these blocks are used as a reference. By themselves, how do you measure with it? I don't know. <laughs> well, they do make a kit. This, I think this square set originally might have been by uh, either Pratt Whitney, Brown and Sharp, uh, w one of the big measuring guys. And they came up with a square set and you can get an attachment that goes over here, top and bottom, uh, that might have a round edge so you can measure holes. Okay. It might have a flat piece that sticks out so you can measure it as a gauge going in and out. All so right. the square set has a lot of options. Versatile. It, it is very versatile. But remember, keep in mind that it is unto itself without having the attachments. It's a point of reference. Okay. It's not like a micrometer where you can measure with it. Okay. With the exception of the kit that I was just, that I was just talking about. So the square set is, is another one that's very popular, but it's also uh, very expensive. And again, you can get those many different ways as well. Different materials, that is. Now, how do we know that these are good and they're accurate? They weren't certified. Oh, how do you know about certification? I, well, that's part of what this is all about. Uh, that's right. <laughs> so we send these out on a regular basis to get certified. And uh, this one was sent out in, on August 24th. Oh, that's So we have a certification sheet here. So we know when we pick up this one inch block, it's, it's one, inch, one inch, but it's not. It's off a little bit. Does that matter? Well, yes and no. If you're going to be measuring within millions or within tenths, supposing I put five blocks together, not sure I would, but mm -hmm. supposing I did, and every one of them were off just a little bit. Mm. That's not good. No, they could be small, they could be big. In this case, we're certifying them. We're saying that we've stacked these blocks together oh, okay. and it's supposed to be one inch, yes. 560, let's right. say. 
it might not be one inch 560 unless we look at the certification sure. chart, which is what this is, and we add up what's called the deviation. What do I mean by deviation? What every do you mean block, by deviation? Oh. Every block is checked for its actual size, and if it's not as it's stated, then okay. we can look at this. In this case, it's five millionths off, six millionths off, whatever you, it is. You can make your we adjustments can, from there. We can add those up, so if we, if we stack six blocks, we look at each one of these, we look at the uh, deviation, and we put the real size down okay. after the deviation. That okay. way we know that the size is correct. Where do we go to get these certified? In this case, it went to inspect, and they certified the blocks. Okay. How do we know that they know that they're doing what it, what's right? They're tied to National Bureau of Standards as well. Right. So why do we use the certification? Because we already need we need to know that these blocks are tied to some master set somewhere. And oh, okay. So there is yeah. a, a, a measurement god. Right. And it's all tied to that uh, to that to their certified situation. Uh, so that that's used around the world. Mm -hmm. So everybody is on the same page. I get and it. even with that, when I was I'm going back a lot of years ago, I belonged to this measurement organization. And they had a set of uh, ring gauges and plug gauges that they sent out in, in different size blocks. Do you think that everybody that has high quality labs couldn't exactly agree in millions? <laughs> and they were all doing the same thing, not touching it with their hands, making it stabilized in a room for mm -hmm. a while, checking it. And they were off, off a little bit. So it was interesting to see all that, those reports come back and these guys are in a meeting. And I, I was just there as an observer. I was a member but I wasn't involved in the measuring. And it was interesting to see what happened and how these guys were trying to say, well, he's wrong, he's wrong, I'm right, and so forth. So when you get into that fuzzy area, when you get into millions, or if you're splitting a millionth, I mean, that's, hmm. you know, I'll tell you how sensitive that is. If you, put, if you were to put this in a, in a measuring instrument yeah. that can tell you the exact height, it's in a glass cage, and they put it in and let it stabilize. You could put your hand like this, and you could watch it grow. Not even touch oh, wow. it. Okay, because of the heat? Just the heat from your hand wow. will cause it to grow. <clears throat> so that's how, when you're working with that kind of stuff, you're off in, a, you know, in the ozone somewhere. Oh, yeah. So that's, that's why we use certified gauge blocks anyway. I'm getting off. The All right, Glenn, so supposing we wanted to pull some blocks, and we're going to make it one inch, 637 thousandths and two tenths. Okay. I'm going to stack those blocks. Now, right. how would I do that? Well, I'm going to start with the decimal all the way over to the right, the two tenth block. So okay. this is 100 plus okay. two tenths. Right. The next one is 137. So now I've taken away 200 thousandths from my stack. Okay. So the next one is going to be 400, which is this one. And the last one's going to be one inch. The one inch. Why did I start with the with the number on the far right hand side? Because you have to. It's the only way you can do it. Okay. You always start with the tenth block, thousandth block, hundred thousandths block, one inch block. So now right. we're gonna ring these together. And again, I was taught, and believe me, it works. You use a wrist. Why the wrist? Because it has the right amount of it's cleaner than your hands, and it has the right amount of oil to ring the blocks together. Mm -hmm. So I'll give you an idea about what it takes to pull it apart once they're put together. People think it's magnetized. Wow. It's not magnetized. No, it's not. It's so flat it's, wow. that it actually wrings all the air out of it. That's really cool. Isn't that cool? Okay, so. Here's the one inch, I'm ringing together the 400 thousandths, and then I'm going to ring together the 137, and then lastly, I'm going to ring together the 12, the 110 block. 110. And again, I like to use. That's really cool how they stay together like that. Isn't that cool? 
I would have swore those are magnets. They're not. So there's your wow. stack. Now in the meantime, I've warmed that block up with my with my hands. Oh. These blocks are pretty warm. Okay, so you So now I'm gonna go to the deviation chart if I have to, and I can look up each one of these blocks. I'll look up the one inch, see how far off it is, and I'll look up all the other blocks and add up the deviation. If the deviation adds up to say almost a tenth, I write that down as a tenth. Right. So by your hands warming it up, did it, did it expand or did it? It's going to expand. expand. Heat expands. Heat exp okay. So you always have to be very careful about uh, keeping your hands on them too long. Right. So from there, now I have a reference. So again, this is a static measurement. It does not measure by itself. So okay. you need a height gauge or you need a surface gauge Something or you need a micrometer. Up just to double check it. You don't need a micrometer unless you want to double check it, right. which a lot of guys like to do. I mean, I wouldn't, just to make sure you've got the right stack, mm -hmm. you could make a mistake and pick the wrong block. Ooh. Now what do you do then? You could scrap your part, right? Yeah, you would. So you gotta be careful with that. So it's probably not a bad idea. Lunch hour? Almost. <laughs> I What'd you bring for lunch? <laughs> Fish and chips. I'm, I'm in. So that's our stack, again, Double check it with a with something. I would say double check it with either a micrometer or calipers. Right. And make sure you got the right stack. Let it cool a little bit. If you're working with close tolerance. Again, if you're cutting a piece of lumber, you don't need that, do you? Oh no. That's a little too close. So you've got to right have the right tool for the right job. Of course. If you're working with intense, you're sure as heck not going to use a scale. Uh, you might use a dial caliper maybe, but you probably would use a micrometer first. So the one thing you really, being that you're heating things up and changing temperatures, you really got to take your time doing this. You do. Uh, I know when I when I was running an OD grinder, uh, I would put the blocks on a machine because the machine was uh, had coolant running through it and it was room temperature. Okay. So I always let it sit there for a while. But again, temperature is important if you're working with close tolerance. If you're working within a thousandths or half a thousandths, it's not that critical. So that's the story with gauge blocks. That's how you use them. And I'm so glad you were here to, to join us. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. So folks, again, if you have any questions or comments, we always welcome them. Keep in mind, we have some more videos coming up. Again, take a look at some of the videos that we've already done uh, with respect to gauge blocks. I think there's two of them out there, isn't there, Kenny? Two of them? Yeah, there's two. So take a look at those. They go into more detail about the history of the gauge block, how to bring them together and all that stuff. So again, thanks for watching and we hope uh, you've gotten an education by it. It's our pleasure to do it for you. Uh, we love your comments and we love the fact that you continue to watch us. So Glenn and I wish to thank you for your kind comments.